This is a high banker, and it's used to collect gold for hobby prospectors. Unfortunately, it's also illegal in most places across the world, and the thing that makes it illegal is a mechanical pump. And that's what I want to know, is will it still work if I feed it water using a bucket? Potentially paving the path for many prospectors across the world to be able to utilize these fabulous machines. Because as we all know, a bucket doesn't have an engine, and therefore, it's not mechanical. There's an old prospector's proverb, drink 15 bottles of whiskey, marry an orange and leave town when the hole gets too muddy. And that makes no sense. It makes no sense in much the same way that this is probably not going to make a lot of sense for a lot of people. There is a chance, albeit at the moment kind of small, that high banking in Victoria is going to become illegal. This was a high banker. Normally that would run off a small electric bilge pump that pumps out around 500 gallons an hour and that automates the water delivery process. And you see in the Earth Resources website, it gives us a set of guidelines that we have to follow as hobby prospectors. One of them is that we are not allowed to use mechanical means of excavation. So I can use a shovel to dig with because it's not a bobcat. In other words, this is a hand tool and that's allowed to be used to dig. Whereas a high banker, like this one once was, this doesn't use mechanical means to excavate. It only uses a mechanical pump to deliver water to it and the rest of it's done by gravity. And because of that distinction, it means that Victorians have been able to use a high banker now for quite a number of years. But that seems to have changed with a recent change to the Warrandyte Park laws. Now in Warrandyte, they're saying you can't use an electronic or petrol pump to deliver water to a high banker because that is mechanical excavation, even though you're not digging with a pump. So with all of that being said, I want to know, can you use a high banker setup like this with a bucket and will it work? Hey, um, I've got my screen classifier out here because this is going to be by far the easiest method of me collecting a bucket of dirt that's going to go through really quickly in my modified high banker. But... There's an annoying stump in the way. Yeah, yeah. I'm some 20 feet above the creek here on this upper bench deposit. There's some really nice gravel wash here that I found a couple days ago. Round and round the marangaboosh. Swirly goes the weasel. Is that a shotgun pallet? Nope, quartz. Just remember that this is a tiny pan. It can hold basically like one decent scoop of pay dirt. And we have got coarse tin and a nice flake of gold sitting just there. Actually, I think there was a couple little flakes of gold in there, but that's all right. We're just going to put them straight in the uh, modified high banker. Frisbee. We shall be screening down this pay dirt. I know there's gold in it. That's not really the point today. We want to see if the low banker works. Yep, that'll work. You're always getting a little bit of overspillage, but that's what your meat scoops are for. Ooh. Always the problem with working on a bench deposit is you've got to go down and up hills. Ugh. But I got this beautiful five litre bucket and that works a treat. Five litre bucket all nice and full. And you can see I've got more than enough runtime to wash that dirt through. So I'm going to stick with this bucket. The other thing I'm looking at doing is getting a hand-operated bilge pump. I think that will be another way around doing this because I'm operating it by hand. It is a hand tool, there's no electricity or petrol involved. But until I order one of those and I get it in my meaty little paws, rah, we're kicking it old school. Using my army muscles. <laughs> in theory, over the long term, this will still be faster than panning because it's going to allow you to have a break it's going to allow you to use the same sort of benefits you get from a river sluice. It just means that you're bucketing your own water. But if this works, it means you can turn any small high banker or any homemade job into a portable sluice. Oh, that's... That's working just fine.
There is a reason I have a Dream Mat sluice box set up in front of a traditional riffle style sluice. Riffle style sluices are a little bit more prone to whitewashing the box when you get surging, and surging is what happens when you get intermittent water. And generally speaking, Dream Mat doesn't suffer from the same problem because of the way that the water moves in a backwards fashion. It goes down a hook and then comes back up the box. Of course, I am going to be the first to say this is not going to be the most efficient way of processing material. But at the end of the day, we're hobby prospectors, right? We're out here for the fun of it. And I enjoy doing stuff like this. Catching gold in unique and interesting ways is more important to me than the amount that I can process. I'm more about hunting those ultra-rich micro deposits that I get a lot of satisfaction and gratification from from doing something like this, as opposed to shoveling a cubic meter of dirt through a high banker and being exhausted by the end of the day for a gram or two. Including filming, that bucket took me about 11 and a half minutes to run. That is pretty slow. So I'm not gonna film the next one, I'm just gonna put it on a hyperlapse and I'm gonna time how long it actually takes me to do a bucket using that method. It is the biggest problem with filming. It takes up a lot of time. Roughly the same amount of dirt, I'd say a, a little bit more. Alright, time trial. A 20 litre bucket classified down to quarter inch took me six minutes to process. That is really fast considering it takes me about a minute and a half to do a single pan. One of these buckets here holds somewhere between six and eight pans, depending on the pan you're using. So that is certainly faster than panning. Let's see if we've got any loss. Good news! That's a flake of gold. Well, that's good. At least we're running dirt with gold in it. And the dream mat is the same. We've got black sand everywhere. I can't see visibly any gold. But the proof is never in black sand. We've got to take a test pan to tailings. People think that the efficient part of a high banker down there is the sluice run, but it's actually not. The most important part of any high banker or sluice box system is your spray bar setup. These spray bars are what ultimately wash your rocks clean of dirt, break up clay balls and break up dirt clumps that allow the gold to separate. The spray bar is the thing that makes a high banker so efficient and we don't have that right now. So I'm thinking if we're gonna have any loss, it's gonna be because there were small balls of clay and small dirt clumps and rocks that weren't washed properly and the gold had stuck to them and gone out the end. No matter how big or good your wash plan or sluice box system is, you always lose a little bit of gold. It's the sacrifice back to the gold gods and the gods of the creek that have been so generous as to give you some in the first place. The question always remains, is it acceptable? Was how much you lost okay? And if I'm recovering, say, 95% of my gold, 90% of my gold, I'm up nine out of 10 specs. And that's pretty good. And as to the question of loss, we've got black sand, which you would expect. I do have a speck there. One. One piece. That is not bad. The thing that we have to check, though, is how much gold is actually in those concentrates. Because one speck could be all that's in the dirt. So we've got to make sure that there's more than one speck in our concentrates. Right, how many specs are we meant to be getting? We wanna see more than one speck of gold because one speck would be bad. It means we're losing 100%. I can already see a nice big flake just there. And yeah, we got way more than one speck. Look at that. Overall, I can count nine individual small pieces of gold and a bunch of gemstones in that pan. That would mean we're losing approximately 10% of our gold, which is acceptable for a system like this.
That is 60 litres of pay dirt run through and I think I'm going to call it here for the day because it is getting kind of late in the afternoon. So let's see how much gold we got. Now I am going to assume here people are going to want to know what was caught in the dream mat and what was caught in the top mat. So let's just wash out the bottom mat, see how much gold ended up down here first. Dream mat's pretty good. Even in suboptimal cases of operation, you usually end up with a decent amount of gold. I'm not seeing really that much black sand, so that's good. Uh, that looks like we've picked up some shotgun pellets there, which makes sense because the riffles I've got in the top sluice box are not that big. And yeah, just a few micro dots in the bottom sluice. So obviously whatever gold we're going to get is definitely going to be in that top box. Now I have a Javi riffle running in this little unit. These are a fantastic addition to any sluice box. They really help up your gold take. Under that Javi riffle is a piece of Minus Moss. Now traditionally, if I was running this high banker, this is where most of my gold would be caught. A little bit more concentrates than what we got out of the Dream Mat. Oh, one of the other benefits of using Dream Mat, less to clean up, but also less gemstones. That's why I like using expanded mesh because you do get to see some more gems if you use it. Oh yeah. There's some black sand in there, that's for sure. I'm incredibly blessed and thankful to have such a large platform to have a voice on about subjects just like this one. And part of me being able to do this on such a regular basis of both my channel memberships and my patrons. I want to say a massive thank you to all of those who have jumped on board over the last month, as well as the long-term guys that have been helping me make videos just like this. We do giveaways, pay dirt, and a whole bunch of other stuff over on Patreon and on channel memberships. If you are interested, there are links in the description below. Reedy Creek Black Sands, one of those things that if you don't use the wrap tap method you're never going to reveal the gold <laughs> all right it's fine it's fine and there's a decent amount of it look at that we know we're not losing too much gold in our tailings we know that there was not that much gold in the dream mat and our top box gave us most of our gold that means we're definitely not on the richest ground but considering the methodology of what i was doing to get this gold i'm very happy to see those flakes